So uh, welcome. We've already got 15 or 16 uh, people joining us this uh, Sunday Sunday morning here in Fountain Inn, uh, evening in India. And we're so glad that uh, you're, you're here and joining uh, Lilla Schwartz for her yoga class today. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, if you were here, she does reside uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, which is only about an hour and 15 minutes away. So anyone that uh, is interested to, to join some of her live classes and headed that way, please check her out. And I've also just typed in the chat box, uh, Lilla's website, and uh, please visit it. You'll see that she offers free resources, featured online courses, uh, live courses, and more. So um, with that, Lilla, let me go ahead and turn it over to you to begin the, uh, the asana practice. Wonderful, Radha. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for today's practice, you're going to need a chair and two blankets. So I had one blanket folded yesterday, and today I have a second one. Um, a small pillow will work for the second blanket. It's for the end of the class for the breathing in Shavasana. So just to let you know what we'll be using today as far as additional props. I also planned this morning's class... <clears throat> To support the work that Shradalu is um, sharing with us, so we're going to work on uh, being aware of space and boundaries in our yoga practice, and we're going to work on balance. So that's the plan for today. If you would please come to a comfortable sitting position, either on the floor or in the chair. Pull the flesh out from under your sits bones so you're sitting evenly on the two sides. And see if you're sitting high enough that your thighs are parallel to the floor. So if you're sitting on the floor, raise yourself up on the blanket so you have support for your spine. Close your eyes, draw your awareness inward, draw the head back, align the crown of your head with your pelvic floor, be aware of the shashumna from above the crown through the soft palate, the front of the throat, and down along the front of the spine, the core of the body, all the way down. Into the earth beneath you. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And again, as we did yesterday, bringing the palms to the center of your chest. Allowing the shoulders to release downward. And then with an inhale, raising the arms up to the high crown and then pulling the energy down around you as you exhale. Again, inhaling. Nice big breath. And being aware of the space around the body. So not just our physical body, but our pranic and energetic body. One more time. Defining the space of our being. And then being aware of the sides, the front, the back. The peace that comes in the stillness. So that we move from that center through the practice. Deep inhalation. And exhale, slowly bow your head. Sure. 
surrendering to the grace of the mother. And then exhale, lower your hands and slowly open your eyes. Stretch your legs out in front. <clears throat> Shake them out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shake them out a little bit. And we're going to start lying on the floor. So I'll try and be very clear because I know once you're lying down, you can't see me so well. But we're going to do very simple moves on the floor just to warm up the hips. So I'm lying flat on my back. I'm going to stretch my legs out straight and then bend my right knee and bring it in toward my chest and just pull it in and out a little bit toward the chest and the armpit, loosening up that first hip. So in this case, it's my right side. And then I'm going to release that leg and take the opposite leg in. Just pulling in and out, not forcibly, but just getting some movement in the hip joint finding the resistance between the bending knee and reaching out with the straight leg, and then change again. Back and forth, and then change again. So my second side, my left knee coming in, reaching out through my right leg, and then release. And shake the legs out. And now bend the right knee again and hold it with one hand. And make a circle with your knee as if you're drawing a circle on the ceiling. Make a circle for the hip joint. And see if you can do it mostly guiding with your hand, not too much with the muscles of the hip. But just getting some rotation in the hip joint in one direction, so we've gone one way. Now go the opposite way and circle in the opposite direction and just see how even you can make those circles on the ceiling so we don't have ovals or flat edges, but see if you can make it nice and smooth. And then release that leg and slide it back to the floor. And as we go along, again, observe the differences as to how the body changes with the practice and opens up. It opens up, which is the idea of asana. And then let's make circles on the ceiling with the left knee. You make them nice big circles as you can make them in one direction. And then reverse and make those circles in the opposite direction. Right. Again, even circles on the ceiling. And then release and slide that leg down and shake it out. One more bent knee version. This time interlace the fingers and hold on to your kneecap. So don't hold on deep on the shin but way up high at the kneecap. Push the knee away from your chest until you feel tension in your arms. So my arms are straight, and I push the knee away. I'm going to keep the knee steady where it is and curl just a little bit. It's not a sit-up. It's just a curl-up. And curl back down. Inhale. Exhale, curl up. And back down, one more time, deep inhale. Remember to let go on the inhale, exhale, activate and curl. And then head down and release that leg, shake it out. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation, and then change sides. Interlace the fingers on the left kneecap, push the knee away from your chest until you feel the tension in your arms, and arms are straight. Keeping the knee steady, inhale, exhale, curl up. And then exhale and release. Deep inhale, exhale, curl up. Shoulders away from the ears. Knee holding steady. And back down one more time. 
Deep breath, exhale, curl, just a partial curl. This is just to wake up the core muscles and then release. Shake your legs out and take your arms out to the side like a letter T. <clears throat> it's easy to take your arms out and have them up high by your eyes, but I want you to lower them down a little bit so they're with your shoulders. So as if it's making a straight horizontal line. And then bend both knees. Bring your knees into your chest. Keep your knees together. And I'm going to twist halfway to the right. So I'm just going to let the knees roll over halfway and stop. And take a deep breath and extend the right arm so you feel the support of the right arm to help hold the knees. And then back to center. Inhale. Exhale to the left, halfway. Lightly press the back of the left arm to the floor to keep your shoulders. So the arm action is to keep the shoulders on the ground so they're not popping up. And then back to center and repeat, deep inhale. Exhale, twist over, halfway, keep the knees together. You can let the eyes face the ceiling, shoulders on the floor, pressing the back of the right palm. So I'm locking my elbow and pressing the palm to keep my shoulders steady. And then inhale back to center. Regroup. Take a breath last time. Exhale to the left. And again, I'm pressing the back of the left palm to keep my shoulders steady and knees together. And then inhale and up you come and exhale, place the feet on the floor. Very good, take a deep inhalation. And now let's hold behind your right knee and we're gonna straighten the right leg up towards the ceiling. So inhale, exhale, push the heel up and bend down. So I'm flexing my foot, pushing my heel up, stretching the calf and back down. Repeat, exhale, stretch up. And there's a little pressure of my hands against the hamstring muscles at the back of the leg, right? So it's helping to release the back of the leg And then stretch the heel up, open the knee as much as possible, and hold it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale and exhale. Release and place that foot back down on the floor. And we'll do the second side, holding behind the left knee. Inhale, exhale, flex the foot a little bit, stretch up. Bend, extend, stretching the heel up, stretching the calf, feeling the hands pressing a little bit into that hamstring. So even if your leg doesn't go all the way straight, because the hand is there, pressing in the hamstring, you're still warming up those hamstring muscles and keeping your knee happy. A little stretch. Once more, stretch up and hold it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Take a breath. And exhale, release. Place the foot back on the floor. And now let's, I'm going to start with my left foot on top of my right knee. So my ankle's on top of the knee, and I'm going to point my toe and flex. And point and flex, and point, and flex, and then make some circles with that foot in one direction and then the other direction, waking up the chakras of the ankle. And then keeping the legs as they are, I'm gonna tip to the right, 
until my right knee touches the floor and maybe even my left toes will touch the floor. And gives a big stretch on the outside of the hip and hopefully some in the front of the hip as well. And then inhale, pick the knee back up and go to the other side. So keeping the knee out, go to the other direction, drop the knee down on the floor. And again, feel that opening of the side body. Nice smooth breath in and out. And then inhale back to center and take the knee off and place the foot on the floor. All right, that was side one. Now go to side two, cross the ankle over the knee and then point and flex and point and flex your foot and point and flex and then circles in one direction and circles in the other direction. Very good. And now we're going to tip again. So I'm going to start by tipping to my left, which gives me a big stretch as I let that knee move away, top knee drop away from the belly on the front of the hip and the side. So it's like a warm up for the hips for poses like Padmasana. Yeah. And then inhale back up to center. And exhale, go the other way and touch the knee to the floor. And again, releasing through the belly and the hip. And then inhale back up to center. Uncross, stretch your legs out, shake them out. And then we're going to roll over, so roll to your right side, slowly push yourself up to sitting, and just take a moment to clip my hair back. And we're going to go to cat cow and downward facing dog pose like we did yesterday. So on your hands and knees, let's go as we did yesterday, we'll go forward and back. So I have my toes curled under. I'm going to go forward. Yep, that little cramp there. My toes don't want to curl under right now. Maybe yours don't either. Let's see what you can do. Move forward. So you're stretching your wrist and back. So it's a little bit like a child's pose. Flow forward and back. And then go ahead and go into cat cow. So push, curling, and then lift the tail and lift the head. Again, push down, curling, and then lifting the tail and lifting the head. And then keep the head rising up, stretch the front of the arms, curling the toes, lift up, hips high up for downward facing dog pose, and stay up on the ball of your feet. So Work on your toes a little bit. Yeah, when we lose balance through time, we lose the movement of the toe joints. So let's see if we can keep the feet waking up here, rising on the toes, and then stretching the heels back and down any amount. Rising up, stretching back and down. And then walk your dog again like we did yesterday. So kind of keeping the hips up high, bending one knee as the opposite heel goes toward the floor, stretching the calf and the leg. And then inhale, exhale, take your knees down, open the knees out to the side a little bit, and come to a nice open child's pose. And rest, rest your arms, forehead on the floor. Do a smooth breath. So is that terms that are being used now is interception. 
having that sense of going in and perceiving what's going on on the inside of the body. All right, so we're going to use the chair next. I'm going to pick that chair up and put it on my mat. And we're going to come to a standing position. So let's stand to Dasna for just a moment. So in Tadasana, we want to spread the toes as much as we can, opening the soles of the feet. So my teacher, because I am guy, used to say, feet like an elephant, ankles like a goat. And those of you who have observed elephants and goats know exactly what he meant. It's that crispness of the ankles lifting, but the solidness of the foot on the earth. So let your feet be like an elephant and make your ankles like a goat so you have that sense of rising, energy rising up. Mm -hmm. And draw the belly back. Palms together. And then inhale, raise the arms up. And take them out to the side and describing that space around the body, drop and extend the shoulders. And lower the arms down. Now bring your arms out in front of you. And imagine you're doing plank pose. Chaturanga push-up pose. Push the floor away from you and feel your belly draw back. Yeah, and feel that space in front of the body. Now be aware of the equal space behind your body. Space that you can't see. Mm -hmm. And then slowly pick up one foot and come to balance. It's a simple beginning balance pose. Mm -hmm. And arms out to the side. Mm -hmm. And then down. So just a little trial, just a test to see how we're doing. And then again, find the space in front of you. Push the floor away, pull Pull the organs back toward the spine so you're supporting your spine with your core. And then bring the other foot up. Arms out to the side. And extend the arms. Be aware of the space behind you. And then lower down. Okay, so that was the test run. Now let's go ahead and go see if we can go a little deeper with the balance poses. So I'm going to step my right foot forward underneath the seat of the chair. So I have a nice spread about one leg length. It could be a little shorter. I'm going to turn my hips to face the chair. Roll my shoulders, shoulders back, lift up, lift the breastbone, look up. And I'm going to hinge at my hips, pushing my top thighs back and bring my hands to the seat of the chair. Now you can stay right here in this position. The idea now is to get an anchoring in the front foot and a stretch on the back of the front leg. So the muscles of the legs need to be somewhat resilient to help us balance so we can adjust because balance is always about adjusting and readjusting. So extend the arms a little bit and be here. If you're more flexible and you want to take your elbows down, take your elbows down. And if you're still more flexible and you want to bring your head down, bring your head down. And do the best you can to keep the knee extended. Follow your breath. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Reach out with the big toe, even lift the toes up in the air, just the tips of the toes, not the base of the foot, not the sole, just the tips of your toes. You get a better extension. Exhale completely. Walk your hands back to the starting position, bend your front knee, and step out. Up you come. And pause for a moment and feel. And now we'll go to side two. Stepping the left foot underneath the seat of the chair. Turning your hips to face the chair. 
And make sure you have balance here. So my feet, there's a little bit of space between my feet. One foot is on one side of the center line. The other foot is on the other side of the center line. All right. And hands behind your back. Lift your chest. Roll your shoulders back. Inhale. Raise the breastbone. Look up. And then exhale. Hinge at your hips. Push your top thighs back. Hands to the chair. And again, start here in a balanced position, especially if you have any kind of back concerns. You want to protect your spine by not asking it to overly round, so this is a good place to stop. Or you can feel more flexible. You can bring your elbows down, and then you can also release the head. Even rest the head on the seat of the chair should it get that close. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And then slowly raise your head up. And bend your front knee and step forward. And step out for a moment and pause. Okay. So we're going to do a balance pose now. I'm going to turn the chair around. And we're going to do Virabhadrasana 3, Warrior 3 pose. So you have to step back quite a bit. My foot's going to be somewhere maybe a couple feet away from the chair because I've got to be able to touch the chair with my hands. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to bend the knee, come forward, and have my hands on the chair. So you may have to push the chair out just a little bit to do what? To lift up the back leg, straighten the standing leg, and balance on one foot. Okay, so let's try that. Give you a chance to get your chair in position. And then I'm going to bend my knee, turn my hips to face the chair, Take a hold of the chair, and it can be as near or far as you feel comfortable. You can bend your elbows if you need to. That's just fine. Come up on one leg. Mm -hmm. Raise the back leg up. And then think about keeping the belly lifted away from the floor. And if you're very good at balancing, take the same arm as the standing leg and put it back behind you. And then if you want to work a little bit more to balance, you touch with two fingers. Then you touch the chair with one finger. And then you release. And take the leg down. So that's a little progression for you to practice. And pause a moment. Center your breath. Feel the beat of the heart. And then we'll go to side two. So I'm going to keep my left foot in place. See, I found my spacing now. I'm going to keep my left foot in place. Turn my hips to the chair. Bend my front knee. Come forward. And then lift. Touch the chair and then lift the back leg up. Straighten my standing leg. Smooth inhalation and exhalation. And again, if you feel stable, you can keep the knee microbend if you need to. As you feel stable, take the same arm as the leg behind you. Standing leg and arm free. And if you feel more stable, you come to two fingers. But be aware of your relationship to the floor. And belly relationship to the floor to find your balance. And then out you come. Okay, it's a good challenge. I almost was kissing the plants with my toes. All right, so pull the chair in a little closer. So you have it there. So this will bring some ease to the practice. So we're going to use the chair this time. 
I'm going to adjust the camera just a little bit. There. Okay, I noticed my head was disappearing into the clouds. All right, so from here, standing Tadasana. Again, bring the hands up in front of you. Push the arms forward. Draw your belly back and be aware of the space in front of you. It's like setting a boundary. Here's my boundary. I'm going to push away, right? And then if I take my arms out to the side, I can push away so my energy field is within that boundary that defines me and the space around me. And then I have to use my inner eye and look to the back of my head and be aware of the space and support behind me. So the energy field, the auric field goes all the way around. Be aware of that. Lower the hands and then shift the weight, keeping the belly in, shift the weight. And of course, this is a starting position. Those of you who have more of a practice, bring the foot all the way up. Mm -hmm. And again, you have the fingertips on the chair, so what? so that you can be aware of the space around your body. So be aware of the space. Front, back, side to side. And let the space have volume, have presence. Think of that pranic presence in the space around you. Mm -hmm. And then if you feel ready, you take the hand off the chair. And if you still feel ready, you take one arm up and then the other. Keeping in your awareness the space around you, supporting you. And then slowly take the arms down and release. Pause a moment. Find your breath. Go back to feet like an elephant and ankles like a goat. Define the space in front of you, pushing out with your arms, drawing your belly back. And then define the space to the sides of your body and be aware of the space behind you. So feel the dropping of the space behind the body, up the front and down the back, and holding you steady. And then again, using the chair, shifting the weight to the opposite foot, and finding either the starting position or the high position. So in honor of Dr. Sakar, who introduce me to you all and to this yoga practice with you. I'm going to keep my hand here for a moment. I want to remind you that balanced poses help to regulate blood pressure. They switch you from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic system, help to reduce stress and anxiety. And when you add the smooth breath to all of that, it becomes a very supportive practice. And up you go, supportive to our spiritual journey here on Earth. You wear the space behind you as well as to the sides and the front, supporting you. So diffusing your focus. And then down you come. And release. All right, so I went through that practice fairly quickly. I would say the only other balance type pose that would be useful would just be to play with your balance. Play with your balance in the sense of if I'm standing Tadasana, I may decide to just pick one leg up and move it out to the side and maybe drop the knee down and maybe reach back and come forward and lift up and come down. 
So just that sense of moving in space and finding some balance. Now that you're aware of the space, you can play inside that particular space. And then out to the side or in or dropping down or back and then forward and up and back down again. All right, and let's do one straddle forward fold. So I'm gonna step my legs wide apart. I'm lining my heels up with the back edge of my mat so I know my legs are even. I'm gonna draw the bottom of the belly in and up. Again, hinge from the hips, hinging forward. Walk your hands down to the floor, not between your feet. Don't go to the extreme. Go to the modified position. So my spine is parallel to the floor, somewhat flat, and stretch up through the arms and pull up through your legs. So you pull the energy up into the body and then maintaining the legs. Release the head down any amount. Walking the hands back, releasing the legs, releasing the spine. Again, think feet like an elephant, ankles like a goat. So you find that good balance. And then walk the hands forward, lift the head and chest up. One hand to your hip, the other, pull your tail down, up you come, and heel, toe, your feet in together. And pause, bring your palms to the chest. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Again, be aware of the space around your body. And with this last breath, we're going to go to some pranayama and shavasana. So if you would, take your first blanket. It's folded the same as I had it yesterday and put it in position. And take your second blanket or your little pillow and put it across the top for your head. And then we're going to sit on the floor. And again, hands distance away from the blanket so it's not way up high. And then come back down, lay your spine evenly on the blanket. And position the pillow so that, so that it's almost touching your shoulders. And then like we did yesterday, I'm going to have you first check the position of your hips. Make sure your hips are even on the floor. Stretch your legs out. Reach with your heels. Pull your toes up. And then lift one heel and then the other just briefly to soften the calf muscle and then let your feet flop out. And we can flop to the side completely. And then taking your fingertips on the front of your shoulders. Swing the arm across in front of you, drawing the inner shoulder blade down away from your ears, elongating the side of the neck. Same with the opposite arm, taking the elbow across in front of you, up towards your head, inner shoulder blade down, the back lengthening the sides of the neck, and then allow the arms to fall out, palms up, and just feel the body, feel the energy, how your body is stimulated from the practice. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Breathe smoothly, deeply, satisfying breath into your belly. Letting go of all tension and effort.
Let the exhalation be slightly longer than the inhalation. And in that slightly longer exhalation, feeling how your body settles, how the rhythm of the heart begins to slow down. And feel the back ribs melting into the blanket. And as they soften and melt, observe your breath. Observe the ease of the breath. Observe the volume. So we're not just breathing with the belly, or the front ribs are also breathing with the back ribs and the side ribs. Soften in the back of the neck and throat. Softening the eyes and the muscles of your jaw. And we're going to do a stepped inhalation and a brief hold of the breath. So begin by exhaling completely. Let go on the exhalation. And then begin an inhalation, a long, deep inhalation from the belly to the solar plexus, into the ribs. And when you think you've reached the top of your breath, pause and do some sipping of breath. So you puff up just a little bit your rib cage and then pause and hold it. Two or three counts and then slowly release and exhale. And we'll do the same thing again, beginning with an exhalation, becoming quiet at the bottom of the exhalation, and smooth, long, slow, deep inhalation. When you feel almost to the top of your breath, sip more breath. Feel the expansion of the lungs, left, right, front, back. Pause for a moment in that expansion. And in that part, then slowly exhale. So in the Hatha Yoga Pachipika, it talks about the pause of the prana, pause of the breath, still the consciousness. So we're coming to that point of stillness. And then remembering the stillness as we exhale. So feel free to do one more breath. We have a minute left. Feel free to do another breath. Expanding the solar plexus, the ribs, and then sipping the breath in. Holding, pausing, allowing all surrender, just surrendering to the stillness, to the mother, and then exhale. Let 
with yourself. Be still, relaxed, natural breath. Slowly coming back, wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bend one leg, roll to your right side. And then push yourself up to a comfortable sitting position. You have your blankets there, you can sit up on the blankets. Sit with your spine straight. Again, align yourself from above the crown. All the way down through the soft palate along the front of your spine into the earth. And observe how the practice of asana and pranayama open the channels to our alignment with that source energy with our guidance with our surrender and receptivity to the guidance of the mother. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Well, I thank you so very much and uh, thank all the attendees that have been joining throughout this uh, practice of, of yours. And I just wanted to remind, because we had so many people coming on uh, throughout the last uh, half hour, that I have put Lilla's uh, website, Yoga with Lilla at iCloud.com on uh, the chat. And Lilla, do you want to just say a few things about what you offer on your, your website? It's Yoga with Lilla.com, L I L L A H.com. Um, but what you gave was my iCloud address. That's my email. Oh, address. okay. I thought I got okay. it on your website. Okay. Right, right. So the website is just yoga with Lilla.com. Okay. Right. And it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really grateful for this retreat and I'm grateful to share with all of you. Uh, it warms my heart to be present. So thank you for all you're doing. And I look forward to the lectures for today. Thank and you. Thanks for joining me. You're Thank welcome. you. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. So at this time, we're just going to take the next uh, three or four minutes. We have our speakers for today coming on and just getting them set up. So we will be back uh, and begin the uh, retreat session in about 10 minutes at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Thank you.